Hey YouTube, Mr. Hubbard929 here. Uh, this should be my last video of the evening, or second to last. Um, what I have here is my rifle case for my AR-15. It's a uh, Plano gun case. It has foam fit that is cut into blocks so that you can custom tailor the way it fits just to your gun. Okay, let me get close up here. Okay. Okay. Um, I custom tailored this to fit with the gun. Uh, open hole here is actually for an iron sight. The rear should, I, you know, decide to leave it on the gun. Second block cut out here for a Bushnell TRS 25 uh, red dot sight. Uh, of course, this. Got cut out space here, bayonet lug, and the uh, well, the F stamped upper and the uh, sling lower loop. So that's all cut out so the gun fits perfectly. Um, inside, along with the gun, I usually keep safety glasses that I wear when I shoot. Uh, I feel it's fairly important in case something happens. You know, you only get one set of eyes. Same way with hearing, you only get one set of ears, so I keep hearing protection in there and a couple extra pair of plugs in this little accessory bin. Um, of course, the gun came with a 20 round uh, uh, Mold Masters magazine. For Maryland, 20 is the legal limit for buying and selling. Now, then, as you can see, I also have a couple PMAGs. 30 round PMAGs. And people go, well, how? How do you get, you know, how are you legally owning two PMAGs or are you, you know, or is it illegal? Well, it is legal. Maryland has some of these stupid laws, one of which being you cannot buy or sell high capacity magazines or anything over 20 rounds. Um, but it's perfectly legal to own them. So for me, I'm just a few minutes from the Delaware line. And so I've been able to buy several higher capacity magazines from sellers out of Delaware. So we will see what comes up with local law legislation on high capacity magazines. Um, I also keep a multi-tool in here. You know, just a El Cheapo from Walmart. And uh, of course knife blades, screwdrivers, pliers. Comes in real handy in case you get a casing stuck in the in the uh, chamber. So far I've only had that happen one time. And it was a casing failed to extract fully and jammed another round in underneath of it into the chamber so everything was jammed. And pulled this out within a, a minute or so it was right back to shooting. And I believe part of that was uh, my fault for not cleaning the gun after a particular long shooting session. And things got kind of gunked up because I shoot wolf ammo. Um, speaking of wolf ammo, I, I shoot wolf all the time and I don't have any problems with it. It shoots actually very well out of this AR. Uh, of course with the price difference that's all I shoot. I've only fired brass out of this thing once or twice. Let me go ahead and put the phone back up here and I will pull the gun out and actually show you the gun. Alright, here we go. just a standard AR-15. When I purchased it, it came with just the bare, you know, bare bones factory AR furniture. And right off the bat, the very first thing I noticed was how uncomfortable the factory pistol grip was. It has that knot no, right here, and you could have picked the gun up with one hand, and it digs right into your finger uncomfortably. So I started looking and found the Magpul furniture. And I like the pistol grip a lot and I like the forward grip. So I went ahead and ordered those and replaced them. And I thought, well, you know, this uh, rear telescopic butt plate is just fine. So I'm not going to change it yet. And I kind of wish that I had because it, it has a little slot to it, rattles. So I'm 
sometime in the near future going to replace that with another Magpul uh, stock. Uh, that, that noise you heard is a, I haven't figured out it's a problem that's arose in the past few months with this gun. Uh, it's a problem, but it's not. If you go ahead and rack the slide, as such, there we go, and the bolt is open. Uh, a slap to the back of the gun allows the buffer tube, the tube itself, with the, the buffer itself to move. And it, of course, drops the spring, allowing the bolt to slam forward on its own. And you can hear that when I smack the back of it. So at first that kind of freaked me out, but I decided that, you know, there was no reason for me to walk around with my bolt open. It serves no purpose. So, I, in an effort to change the problem, I thought that my lever had gotten bent, or, well, my, my hold back. So I replaced it with the DPMS one, and it didn't change anything. So, now, the only thing that I do is, as soon as the gun's loaded, the bolt's closed, and the gun is put on safety and I haven't had any problems and I don't foresee any problems with it. Um, I've talked to a few people and some people say it's normal, some people say it's not. I'm really not sure what to believe, but I know you give her a solid thump back, you get that. Uh, my other video, as I mentioned in it, uh, shooting today, I was shooting out to 175 yards with this teeny tiny t little TRS-25 Bushnell sight. Um, it's 2MOA dot. Let me break this level here so you can see. Yeah, let's see if I can't get it close enough that you can see inside. It's a very small dot, very clear. Um, parallax free, so it means I can leave both eyes open when aiming at a target. You have both eyes open, and I get a great field of view. And then I've still got that dot right on my target. And no matter how you move your head, the dot is where you need it. So I was a little worried when I first got it. I saw how small that was. I'm like, oh, man, this, this is no good. Uh, but after installing the gun and zeroing it and shooting, I've actually fallen in love with that sight. I plan sometime in the near future to get a flip-up uh, backup sight just in case. And at some point, a magnifier. And I'll go with a 7X magnifier and try and mount the magnifier in front of the red dot. To you know, of course, if, if you put a red, if you put the magnifier behind the red dot, it magnifies your dot. And you know, two MOA is a nice small dot, and that's where I want to keep it at. So I'm hoping, but moving the uh, sight back and mounting the uh, <coughs> magnifier in front of it, I'll keep an MOA, you know, two MOA dot but actually have a little bit better accuracy out to a distance by, you know, magnifying and placing my shots a little better. So, that is my Delton AR-15. Um, this is by far one of my favorite guns to shoot now. Uh, when, I, when I bought the gun, I really did not want it. I thought I wanted a Mini-14. And after shooting this and talking to and holding a few many 14s and talking to owners, uh, there, there's no comparison between the two. The AR blows the mini 14 right out of the water. And I do not regret for a minute getting this instead. So that is my AR 15 review of my Delton AR 15. Uh, an another thing, Maryland has a crazy law on the books. The AR 15 is a restricted weapon, meaning there's a waiting period for it. Un unlike most rifles that are cash and carry the same day, you have a cooling off period established by Maryland, I think it's uh, 10 days. So once you purchase this rifle, you know, it stays where it's at for 10 to 15 days and then you can come and claim it, take it home with you. What purpose that serves, I have no idea. I guess pissed off and you go buy a gun, you know, solve the problem, it gives you a few days to cool down, I guess. 
It makes no sense to me. It really doesn't. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, the, the barrel. Uh, the profile to this barrel is straight. You'll see it does not have the recessed area through here to accommodate a grenade launcher. Um, that is what's known as the H-bar barrel. If you see an H-bar rifle from Colt, it looks like the old, uh, what I call Vietnam era uh, M16. Uh, has, of course, it has this type of barrel, you know, the solid stock, the square grips, um, and that in Maryland, you can, it's cash and carry. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of features that they consider to be dangerous. <laughs> it, which, by the way, what they consider to be dangerous, I have some serious problems with. Collapsible stock does not make this gun more dangerous. You lose what, six inches off the gun. Either way, it still has to come up against your shoulder. And personally, I don't like to have my collapsible stock all the way in. I feel like I'm too close to the front of the barrel. You know, comfortable for me and for my own personal grip is at least one to two slots out, if not all the way out. And today, shooting at 175 yards, I had the stock all the way out. I was, felt it was the most comfortable hand position for sitting, well, I was actually sitting at this table outside shooting. And that's how the gun felt comfortable. So anybody that thinks that this makes the gun more dangerous, well, you're an idiot. Um, bayonet lug. Uh, this gun is more dangerous because it has a bayonet lug. Please, somebody, show me one single case of somebody being bayoneted to death as a civilian with, you know, with the bayonet on the end of the gun, because I don't know if that's ever happened. But again, that makes this a registered weapon, or re a registered assault weapon. Um, another feature is the, well, the de detachable box magazine. Yeah, that, that's evil. Of course, the gun is black. That, that's the most evil thing. Is it, it, it's a black gun, so they're not to be trusted. Anyway, with this gun not having the cutaway in the barrel, I was able to buy this and take it home same day. There was no 10-day wait, and I actually like it better because it helps make the bar barrel more solid, and it <coughs> bleeds off heat with less distortion, less problems. Um, very pleased with the weight to me, and you know it, the, the weight feels you know very neutral, very balanced. Of course, this barrel is chrome lined with a one in nine twist. It's chambered in five five six, so you can shoot five five six or two two three through it. Um, and like I said, I mainly shoot uh, Wolf ammo just because of the price, and I'm I'm happy with it. Uh, at some point, I may start buying brass to get into reloading. Um, I want to learn that not so much to save money but as an art form and one of the inherent things that may come with that is it'll be cheaper to shoot once I start doing my own relo reloading. So there you have it, my AR-15 Bushnell TR-25 well, sight, um, Magpul furniture, DPMS bolt release, um, that's the only modifications I've made. Uh, at some point, I may choose to swap out the trigger grouping for something a little smoother. Uh, this, this is a fairly smooth trigger to pull, but from what I understand, the match trigger groups are a lot better. So, we'll find out. There you go, YouTube. That was a review of my Delton AR-15. Thanks for watching. Uh, be safe shooting, everybody. Thank you.